Good afternoon and welcome to UCEA Google Plus Hangouts on Air. This is Amy Reynolds, graduate research assistant and doctoral student at UCEA headquarters at the University of Virginia. I'm here today to interview Liz Hollingworth as a part of her candidacy for the UCEA Executive Committee. Today, listeners will be hearing from Liz Hollingworth, an associate professor in the Department of Educational Policy and Leadership Studies at the University of Iowa. She currently serves as the UCEA Associate Director of Publications. Her research interests focus on curriculum and assessment. In particular, she is interested in how federal accountability policies are affecting classroom practice and school administration. For more information on her professional accomplishments, refer to her biography, available in this broadcast summary. Welcome, Dr. Hollingworth. Thank you, Amy. So we'll begin with the first question. Please tell us about your background and your scholarship as it relates to leadership preparation and practice. Sure. Um, hi, my name is Liz Hollingworth and I grew up in Southern California. I grew up in San Diego. I went to UCLA and I did my master's degree in education at Northwestern University. I then taught public school in Chicago Public Schools and then we moved to Michigan where I taught in mid-Michigan, I taught middle school and then I was the gifted and talented coordinator for our district. I then moved on to work on my PhD at Michigan State University and I then transferred to the University of Iowa where I finished my PhD in educational leadership studies and I did my um, I did a postdoc with Iowa testing programs looking at issues of assessment and especially in terms of no child left behind policy. And then my PhD work actually was, I, I misspoke, it was actually in language literacy and culture. I was studying what happens in classrooms. So my, my area of expertise is actually instructional leadership. And so now as a professor here up in educational leadership and policy studies, my, my coursework works on policy. So looking at helping policymakers um, choosing appropriate assessment data to measure principal efficacy. I teach a class that looks at assessing teacher quality and those sorts of things. Uh, and I also spend a lot of my time, my research time, looking at things like formative assessment as a tool to improve student learning. I, uh, I'm working on a grant with the Iowa Department of Education to watch how teachers are implementing this new strategy of formative assessment in their classrooms and, and what role leadership plays in making those uh, policy initiatives actually work. So that's a little brief background on me. What else would you like to know, Amy? Okay, the next question is, uh, you have served for several years as a plenary session representative. Yes. Tell us about your engagement in UCA's governance. I have been very fortunate in that when I first joined UCEA, I was invited to be on the UCEA review. I had a column called Innovative Programs, and in fact, Hans Kloss now does that column, and I got a chance to meet people from all over UCEA, got to interview professors from all over the place and ask about their new innovative programs. Um, so that was my sort of entree into doing service work with UCEA. Since then, I've, I'm now the Associate Director for Publications, and we're working on building a, a strategic plan, actually, this year at the UCEA conference to build a strategic plan for where we want our publications to go, what direction we want to see UCEA go in, uh, in the next few years, not just with our journals, but also with books that we could be putting together that would represent the work that's happening uh, in our field. Um, for the most part, that, that has been the, the governance. I also got to be on the uh, Executive Committee Nomination Committee. Uh, and that was uh, a couple of years ago, and it was really fun, actually, because I got to meet these super famous people that I'd only ever read their articles, and then I got to meet them and talk to them. So that made me happy. And it's even more exciting now that I got invited to be nominated just on it. I'm like, I'm on the other side of this now. That's kind of cool. So uh, that's the extent to which I've been working with UCEA. Okay. Um, to dovetail on that, in what other ways have you been engaged in UCEA? Well, the big thing, I'm the, um, I'm the chair of the Learning and Teaching and Educational Leadership Special Interest Group, which is the LTEL-SIG, and it is, uh, has a joint relationship with UCEA and AERA. And as the chair of that SIG, um, I was able to kind of bring together my two worlds, if you will, so the LTEL-SIG world and the UCEA publications world. And so we 
took all of the Kottkamp award-winning dissertations. Those are dissertations that had as their focus uh, evaluating preparation programs. And we took the last three years of those, and Arnie Danzig and I, um, Arnie Danzig is awesome. He's at San Jose State University. He and I edited this volume, which is a, a compilation of these cutting-edge dissertations on preparation programs, and that's the UCEA series book this year. Um, the second book that we have coming out next year in 2014 is going to be edited by Karen Sanzo at Old Dominion, and that book is going to be looking at uh, some of the research that's come out of the FIPSI and IES grants dealing, like having national grant money to pay for research on principalship and evaluation. So those sorts of activities, I think, have been really interesting to me personally, but I'm also happy to have that opportunity for service with UCEA for making sure that people's research gets out there. Okay, thank you. The next question, please discuss with us your scholarship, research projects, teaching, and or service that can inform the work of UCEA, particularly the work of the Executive Committee. Yeah, actually, um, I just finished a paper with Ed Fuller. Uh, it's in press right now with Educational Administration Quarterly. Uh, we called it A Bridge Too Far. And what we were looking at was how these policies that have been coming out all around the country, state departments are trying to build these value-added models using various variables to come up with a formula for whether or not preparation programs have been doing their job. So it's sort of this idea that you can take somehow magically, we could take children's test scores and use those test scores as a measure for whether or not a principal has been doing uh, a good job. And then part two of this is, is the paper we're working on now, which is then the preparation program that prepared that principal, to what extent should they be held accountable for how that principal turned out. So that's been a really fun project I've been working on with Ed. Um, some of the other stuff I've been doing has also dealt with issues having to do with evaluation, and particularly I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm the associate director for the Center for Evaluation and Assessment here in Iowa, and as part of that work, I've gotten the really unique opportunity to talk to a bunch of people at the state level in different states who are trying to figure out how to best evaluate principal candidates. So there's, there's all the different pieces, right? There's the, the principal candidate evaluation, there's the, the program, the preparation program evaluation, and then there's the individual candidate assessment, right? Whether or not somebody uh, deserves their license or, or is ready to graduate. So, so those are kinds of, those are the issues that I'm really interested in. And another really fun project I'm working on right now with Terry Orr at Bank Street College and Joni Buttram and, uh, down at Delaware, um, the three of us have been working with the Massachusetts uh, Department of Education to build, their, build the rubrics for their evaluation system for principal candidates. So that's been some of the research I've been doing that's really specifically having to do with, with principals. Um, I also have a paper in the Journal of Research on Leadership Education that looked at data-driven decision-making in higher education, and that was specifically looking at the redesign of a superintendent licensure program. Um, I know many of us work in university settings where our prep programs have been under fire for quality or that we've been asked to demonstrate our quality in some way. And I think when I'm, I'm thinking about the work of the Executive Council, some of what I can bring to bear on those conversations is not only just what's happening cutting edge about how we are being judged and how our work in higher education is being evaluated by policymakers, but also looking at some sort of strategic long-term ways that we can make sure that we're part of the conversation. Um, you know, we're, I was just recently part of a, a group phone call through UCEA and we were discussing just this very thing, like how can we make sure that UCEA stays part of these policy conversations? It's, um, it's not good enough that we just write about it in our journals. We have to be invited to the table to be informing the departments of education when these decisions are made in the first place. So that's primarily what I'm looking forward to if I'm lucky enough to be elected to the Executive Council. Okay, on that note, um, we'll f close with one final question. Okay. Please share the reasons why you have been or why you have chosen to run for the executive committee and your vision for the future of UCEA. Oh, thank you. I'm really, really excited about the future of UCEA and where it's going, and I really want to be a part of it. I've been um, 
I've been working with the UCA Evaluation Task Force for a long time, and a lot of the stuff that we've worked on and that we've thought of has actually become an integral part of what the UCEA Executive Council does. So one of the reasons that I chose to run is that I've seen firsthand the power of that group when the task force's information gets brought to the EC and decisions get made, I, I see how that then translate into action and it actually becomes something. Um, and I love that. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and that's why I decided to run. Okay. Thank you for your time and thoughtful responses, Dr. Hollingworth. Oh, thank you, Amy. I really appreciate this opportunity. This interview will be archived on the UCA Google Plus page and the UCA YouTube channel. Listeners can access or share the interview at any time. We also encourage listeners to post comments and questions on this interview in the comments on the UCA Google Plus page. Please be sure to tune in for our next UCA Executive Committee interview with Dr. Mariela Rodriguez at 3.10 p.m. Eastern Time today, Monday, October 28th. Thank you and goodbye.